So guys, let's continue with this series of videos. Let's talk about physical chemistry or many times it's called equilibrium thermodynamics or thermodynamics at equilibrium. Essentially, we're going to talk about phase equilibrium. So let's talk. As you can see here, I added this image. We got this fire and probably you're wondering this smoke. And the interesting part right here is that we have here gases vapors, liquids, emulsions, uh, solids, and many other mixtures. We are pretty interested, let's say, if I tell you I want to get to know what is the composition of this and why or how it is in equilibrium with respect to fire or air and so on. So this is what we're going to see in this class. So. Let me show you the what do we see or studying in physical chemistry. It's essentially the phase equilibrium. What do we talk about phase is all those changes on phases. Remember this is solid gas and this will be a liquid. So we have this right here, solid gas, solid liquid, liquid gas. These are the phases and these are the equilibrium lines. We are very interested in these lines. How, well, sorry, this pressure and temperature typically. So we're interested at what pressure and what temperature does a mixture or a pure substance has different changes on phases. So for that, you will eventually see that we cannot identify any variable that will help us but the famous Gibbs free energy. And I love this concept of free energy, it means free energy left in order to work or be able to do work in our real world. So many times, well, Gibbs, if you remember, is H minus T S. So we have this entropy concept and we have this entropy concept right here. And what we talk about is essentially how much energy do we have left in order to carry out that process in the real life. So once you understand that, you're going to cover fugacity of gases, which is a very abstract concept. I actually, it's very, very hard to make an analogy to the real world because this is like entropy. You can calculate it, but in order to understanding or for more like a physical meaning, it's kind of hard. So yeah, that's fugacity. Then we are also interested, since we want to know about these lines right here, we want to model them and we use typically Van Hoff equation and more famously clausius clapeyron equations which will help us to relate temperature and pressure and even change on enthalpy. So remember that change on enthalpy is how much energy do you require to turn this solid water into liquid water and eventually this liquid water into vapor. So you can relate that pressure, vapor pressure saturation, pressure, uh, temperature, and change of enthalpy. Now what I will say this is useful for is for multi-component mixtures. What does it mean? It's essentially many components are mixed together and typically are either hetero or more commonly homogeneous mixtures, which are kind of difficult to separate if you don't use the mass transfer basis. So we have plenty of equilibrium, the most common one and the one that you will be studying a lot and the one that you will be learning how to calculate is the liquid vapor equilibrium. You know it is a liquid right here and it goes as vapor. You probably know this as vaporization, you have water and you know that it will go to the environment as vapor. But we have plenty more, so for example we have let's say propane, liquid propane, and it will eventually go as gaseous propane. Even butane, pentane, benzene probably, this is a good example if you've been to the lab, if you have your benzene test, let's say, uh, bigger at two centimeters, then you go out and maybe come later after lunch, you will have maybe one centimeter left, and means it means that benzene goes to the environment and eventually vaporizes itself. So we are very interested in at what pressure, temperature, and how much energy that happens. Now Henry's law, Raoult's law are also for very ideal systems. 
We also understand the deviations, loss, or why do they deviate. Typically, a deviation, or very common deviation, is the azeotrope. The most known one, hopefully you know it, is water ethanol. You cannot separate completely 100% water from 100% ethanol. You will always have a mixture in which you will not be able to purify longer. An activity coefficient. That is, if you remember from analytical chemistry, is the interaction between substances in the same solution. Now we have plenty of models, ideal solution with real gas, ideal solution with ideal gas, we also have real solution with real gas, which of course is the most complex one, but is the most, let's say, precise. We've got this Margulis, Bunlar, Wilson, and RTL, which I think is non-random tool liquid uh, model, and the Uniquack and Unifac, uh, I think is uh, only one chemical I need to check out but those are models in which we let's say do all the math and we account for the interactions of maybe substance A with substance A then substance B with substance B and more importantly some substance B with substance A and substance A with substance B so once you account for all that you will be able to model a very good real solution interacting with a real gas now that was a physical equilibrium, it's very important to say that. Probably you're going to take also this right here, which is no longer physical, this is chemical, it's reaction equilibrium, but many times since it's a small topic in say equilibrium, we are interested in this. Reaction equilibrium is essentially how long or how far does the reaction go. So you want to know your reacting A, let, let me clean this up. If you react A plus B, you form C. Okay, we are interested generally in amount, percentage of transformation, and time. Well, equilibrium or thermodynamics does not account for time. We only account for the equilibrium percentage. So if I tell you this will go in the forward direction about 80%. That means that when we react these and these, we will have 80% transform into C and 20% remains as A and B. We are interested in this because, why? Because we are interested in modeling this maybe in a reactor. If you know that you that physically or thermodynamically speaking, you cannot go to 100%, you will need to account for that 20% going out of your reactor and well, eventually maybe go to a separation and recycle it once again. Now, why do we need this? We already saw what, now why? Well, we need this a lot for equilibrium calculations, especially for all the mass separation processes you might think of, more specifically distillation, but of course you can also use it in extraction, washing and leaching, crystallization, drying, flashing, maybe even in evaporation. You want to know maybe, well, typically we work at constant pressure, but you want to know different temperatures. You can also work with drop of pressure. If you know there's a change in pressure, well, you will need to model that as well. Especially these in pumps, you want to know the different pressures at which the temperature will not be enough in order to get the liquid to remain as a liquid. You will need to learn about this, how to interact with these pressure drops. And also it's very important, this is more about science know about the phase diagrams how to construct a phase diagram maybe you are studying substance or a mixture you need to know how they interact between each other in order to get the pt equilibrium relationships and well probably if you know how to construct it you will be able to read it but at least you need to know how to read a diagram in order to be able to start using all these how to separate mixtures, how to understand pure substances. So for example, you're using 134 refrigerant, 134A, which is very common for refrigeration systems. Probably your car have, uh, has it. Well, if you want to, this is a pure substance, only one substance, not a mixture. You will not need to know the vapor pressure, the temperature, the change of enthalpy, and given that, you will be able to design your 
refrigeration system in order to get a very, let's say, 25 Celsius or it's about 77 Fahrenheit inside your car. So that's why we need it. We need it essentially to know how to model substances, identify their phases, and more importantly, start working with mass separation principles. And I added a side note right here. It's very useful for petrochemicals, meaning that, well, probably, you know, petroleum oil has plenty of substances. Very basic ones are natural gas, which is methane and ethane. Oops, wait for it. Yeah. Methane and ethane. CH4 is almost 80% of natural gas. Typically, ethane, we take it away because we use it for polyethylene. Propane, we love making these propane gases. Then we have ethane, typically used in liquefied petroleum gases, and plenty of other materials, and we will need to model that with the equilibrium calculations, and then we're going to distillate it to finally build these products, methane, ethylene, propane gas, and other liquefied petroleum gases.